everyone, hope you're all doing well. My name is Oliver and today I'm going to be talking about all things electrical engineering. I'll be breaking down what it is as a field, some of the top electrical engineering programs in North America, what classes you might take, and what you can do with an electrical engineering degree once you graduate. What's your starting salary going to look like? What companies can you work for? Can you go to grad school? And so much more. If you're excited for this video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Thank you for doing that. Now let's get into it. Electrical engineering has a long history and is said to be inspired by discoveries beginning in the early 1800s by people like Alessandro Volta who were just beginning to understand how electricity, electric current, and electric charge work. In the late 1800s, universities began offering their first classes of electrical engineering, with Cornell University graduating the first class in 1885, and around the same time in 1882, Thomas Edison was able to commercialize the first electric power grid to 59 paying customers in Manhattan, New York. This field has really evolved over time as new discoveries and inventions have really expanded the capabilities of electronics and communications. One of the biggest branches of engineering actually begun as electrical engineering and then became its own thing, and I'm talking about computer engineering. Engineering. And as you might have guessed, computer engineering just deals with all things computers. Another notable field that has sprung from electrical engineering in recent years is mechatronics engineering. This is my current area of study and it's a mix between electrical, mechanical, and software engineering. And it deals with things like automated systems, HVAC, and other integrated control systems. Some other notable subfields within electrical engineering are the following. Biomedical engineering, aerospace, robotics, power and energy, telecommunications, automation and control, electronics, microelectronics and nanoelectronics, signal processing, photonics and optics, and instrumentation. So as you can see, there is a wide variety of applications for electrical engineering. And since it's such a mature field of engineering, the number of applications is only going to continue to grow. The more technological innovations we make, the more different fields will become offshoots of electrical engineering because our entire lives are essentially run by electricity. You pretty much can't get away from electrical engineering in any other engineering degree that you do. Since there's such a large variety of career choice within electrical engineering, Usually your university will allow you to specialize and take specific courses in your areas of interest in your final two years. This can help you focus more on the things that really interest you and direct you into a career that you find the most interesting. Speaking of university or college for my American viewers, what does the competition look like for admissions into some of the best electrical engineering programs? Also, what courses might you take and what are the top schools that you should choose? So let's start answering these questions by finding the best ranked electrical engineering programs in the United States. The top five schools according to US News are MIT, UC Berkeley, Caltech, Georgia Tech, and Stanford. Now, as an aside here, I just want to say that I'm only using these rankings to make my job easier. I quite frankly think that rankings are almost meaningless when it comes to choosing a school. I have some very strong opinions about rankings and the way that they are conducted, and if you want to hear my opinion on why getting into the best school doesn't matter, here's a video I made on it not so long ago. But that being said, just for simplicity's sake and for this video, I'm going to use these rankings to make it easier to follow along. So let's take a look at MIT since they were ranked number one. I also think that MIT came first in this aerospace engineering video I made, so they clearly have something going for them. So let's take a look and see what types of courses you might take at MIT if you are one of the lucky 7% of applicants who actually get accepted. So while I was preparing for this video, I had to spend like 20 minutes going through MIT's website and trying to figure out how they break down their programs. So luckily for you, you don't have to sit there for 20 minutes because I already did it. So here is the breakdown of how MIT's electrical engineering program works. Also, if you want to follow along, check out the links in the description. I'll be putting links to all of the sources that I use down there, so be sure to check those out if you want to. So let's get into the program. MIT offers multiple programs in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. And one of those programs is a Bachelor's of Science in Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. Now, besides the long name, this degree is kind of a killer combo degree. It's honestly super cool. The fact that they incorporated aspects of the old and mature electrical engineering 
with some of the new techie stuff of computer science is just the best idea I've ever heard of. So how is this program organized? MIT has two categories of classes. First are your general institution requirements, or GIR. These are courses which I'm going to assume all engineers at MIT have to take. The requirements for your GIR are six science courses, eight humanities courses, two restricted electives in science and tech, and one lab course. The second category is departmental requirements. This includes things like an introduction to computer science course using Python, differential equations, communication courses, and some type of interest course. You also have EECS requirements from level one and two lists, engineering electives from the advanced list, and two subjects from a departmental list. As I'm sure you could tell from all of these courses, you got quite a bit to choose from. And I'm sure as you saw in the level one and two courses, you are taking some typical electrical engineering courses, such as circuits, signal processing, electromagnetic waves and fields, elements of software, AI, algorithms, etc. All of these courses are normal courses that you would expect to see in electrical engineering and computer science. Additionally, if we go back to look at one of the interest courses that you have to choose from, you'll see that you have the option between robotics, communication networks, medical technology and interconnected embedded systems, all of which I spoke about in the intro when I was defining the different subfields of electrical engineering. And as mentioned, and honestly better than I thought they would be, MIT really lets you shape your electrical engineering degree the way that you want to do it. There are also tons of other interesting subjects in all of the advanced courses, ranging from AI, microcomputers, programming, sensing, databases, biology related courses, and more. So there really is no shortage of variety in this electrical engineering program. Next up, let's talk about cost. When it comes to how much it will cost you to go to MIT, well, it depends. I've included an MIT calculator in the description below, and after I did a test run with it and put in some arbitrary numbers, I got a total of $16,700 per year. This was assuming things such as being a US citizen, which I'm not, assuming a family income of $100,000, cash of $50,000, retirement savings, of $50,000 and non-retirement investments of $50,000 as well as $300,000 of home equity. Honestly, when they asked me for all of this financial information, I was thinking to myself like, wow, they really don't shy away from trying to figure out your complete financial situation and all of the details. But if this was my real situation, I would not have to pay nearly the full tuition price, which honestly I think is a lie and I don't think anyone pays that full price, but there you go. So let's just assume for the sake of this video that you do get into MIT or any other electrical engineering school and you want to know what you can do with your degree once you graduate. So if you graduate from MIT with your electrical engineering and computer science degree, you will most likely be working in IT or big tech. This could be in the form of companies like Apple, Google, and Microsoft, and even other companies like Intel and AMD that work with semiconductors. Or if you don't really care about how much money you're making, you could work for a government organization. Some other honorable mentions are infrastructure companies and telecommunications companies like AT&T and Verizon. There are a lot of great companies to choose from, and as I'm sure you might have been able to guess, a starting salary of an MIT graduate ain't that bad either. According to their student outcome survey, the median starting salary for a bachelor's degree holder from MIT working in information technology is $118,000. The amazing thing about such a high starting salary is that it'll probably only go up with time. If you are one of those people who wants to get a master's degree, you can see that your reward for doing so will be about ten dollars to $20,000 increase in salary. If you're wondering what future job growth and job prospects look like for electrical engineers, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics in the United States, there will be about average 3% job growth within the electrical engineering field for the next 10 years or so. Next, let's quickly talk master's degrees. I've mentioned it once and I'll mention it again, but if you do choose to do an undergraduate degree in any engineering field, your master's school will most likely accept you into a completely different engineering field. Most, if not all master's schools do not care what your undergraduate degree was. As long as you show some interest in your master's degree of choice, they will most likely let you study it. 
That about wraps up this video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, please share it with somebody else who also might find it useful. Leave me a like on the video. Subscribe to my channel for more similar videos. I have an entire playlist breaking down types of engineering, so be sure to check that out. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Whoosh.